This is Twit. When you're watching somebody talk, and you see their mouth move, and then you hear the hear their uh, voice, or you hear their voice before their mouth actually moves, uh, and that can be very distracting. Uh, give us a little background on why this is even a problem. Well, you, you know, the problem uh, to some degree is as old as media itself, uh, but for a long time, it wasn't really a very significant problem. So if you consider cinema, the very earliest days of cinema, there really wasn't a lip sync problem with silent movies. The piano player could adapt to the, uh, the images on the screen. Um, and as time went by and we added sound, we ran into uh, a separate sound production process from a video production process or a picture production process. And in film, this is okay. You go off and you mix your sound, you go off and you cut your film and, uh, and you come back and you, you put everything back together and you print out to something where audio and video is in sync. And because of the tight control in cinema, keeping that maintained through the theatrical presentation isn't too big a difficulty. You know, they'd load up the mags, they'd load up the film, they'd sync it up and play it. Um, but there, there was manual intervention involved in the process at every step. Now, if you consider TV, TV has always been a very direct thing until recently. And when I say direct, I mean that there was a little electron beam in a camera scanning across um, an image sensor producing an electrical signal, which quite literally was no more than milliseconds away from the viewer's screen, painting that beam back on the screen. At the same time, the mic is picking up the sound. The sound is going through very, very simple production processes and arriving at the speaker at the home set again very, very quickly. And the opportunity for them to get out of sync really didn't exist. Now, fast forward a little more in television into post-production, and suddenly you take audio away like in in film and you you know you mix it separately you come back put it together that's all great as long as your qc is working and you can keep an eye on your output and again you broadcast here and it's all fine however we arrive at this era called the digital era and the digital era brought delay to signal processing because we can quantize the signal and we can do really cool things with video and with audio in the digital domain the problem is it takes time and television systems are inherently synchronous so when you take a video signal and you go and you process it you probably end up delaying it a frame or two, but you need to resynchronize it to bring it back into the production system. So now consider you take your audio off down one path, your video down another, and you do some processing, and you put them back together without any human intervention in a distribution system. You now have the opportunity for audio and video to separate. Even worse in the digital era now is compression, because we now apply digital compression and decompression to both the audio and video, and it may happen several times in the production process, in the plant, in servers, through distribution, uh, through final distribution to the home. And these are all opportunities for different paths to endure different delays so that when it finally gets to the home, the video and the audio are no longer in sync. Then there's one more problem, and that has to do with MPEG distribution. MPEG is a wonderful standard. It was well-conceived, it was well-designed, and how to generate an MPEG signal is very explicitly defined in the standard, ISO 13818. What is not defined normatively or explicitly or in a mandatory way is how a decoder shall behave. So even MPEG, and everybody knows this at home, if you're on a channel with bad lip sync, you switch away and you switch back and the lip sync gets better sometimes. This is because the decoder manufacturer cut corners, did not have a standard to comply to, so they took whatever liberty they wanted in establishing lip sync. So we have systems in place today that are incredibly complicated from image capture to image presentation. And there's variable delays in video and audio throughout the system. And although there may be mechanisms in place to fix it, they don't always work. So we have a world today now where it's quite possible, uh, even in professional presentation domains, to get video and audio separate in time. 